we started planning this in 1993 and they followed very very roughly the, the this artist sketch uh, with one or two minor alterations the main contractor was Toff Johnson we were very very fortunate uh, to get the to get the services of John Sambrook from Hume Upright and Partners because John had actually um, designed the new Victoria Theatre so he was experienced in in theatre design so that was a that was a, a great plus for us because to start uh, talking to an architect from scratch about uh, the things that are peculiar to theatre design uh, would, would have been would have been quite difficult. During the planning stage, of course, we uh, we had to submit our plans to uh, the Arts Council of Great Britain, a uh, lottery fund, and they sent up various uh, advisors to to help us. Um, but in the main, the, the plans drawn up by John uh, were were accepted. They actually offered us some more money if they if he'd make a slight alteration to his to his. Um, to his drawings, which he did, and we got for that we got an extra hundred thousand pounds. In total, we got uh, seven hundred and fifty-six thousand uh, pounds to build a theatre. We had to, of course, then that was that substantially was seventy-five percent of the costs. Uh, so we then had to set about raising uh, the other twenty-five percent uh, of the costs. Uh, we did this by various fundraising methods and writing to companies. All the steel work, for example, you see in this film was donated to us by British Steel. Some of it was uh, non-standard rolling, which they did uh, especially for us. Um, the bricks were uh, from Steakley Bricks at cost price. All the sanitary fittings came from Twyford's. And then there were various, various, various fundraising um, efforts. Uh, so this is uh, this is probably into a, about uh, ten weeks into the original um, building program. The original building program was was forty eight weeks. We actually completed in 51 weeks, which I'm told by building standards was quite good. And of course, uh, we came in we came in on, on budget, uh, which we had to do. And that's that's the picture you see Leak, Leak Road there is. Um, the main thoroughfare into Stoke. This is the steelwork for the, the curve of the building. Um, the curve of the building uh, is throughout every every area of the building has this same curve in, and this is the curve at the, at the top of the. Uh, at the top of the foyer, uh, which uh, leads into the auditorium from uh, from that floor. This is uh, the block work going up uh, to finish the, the fly tower. The fly tower is uh, 11 metres high quite a considerable difference in height between the, the auditorium and the and the fly tower. And the buildings coming on, this is the back of the or the back of the theatre workshop. Uh, that's the entrance to the theatre workshop, so deliveries can come in there. Uh, this is down in the foyer, um, considerably um, moved along from the last pictures you saw. And we're starting now to put the, the finishes to, to the building.
this is the start of the staircase that leads up to the to the top level of the of the foyer. This is the auditorium with its steps in, uh, having had the concrete laid uh, a while back. Uh, the concrete was very difficult to lay because of the slope of the um, of the auditorium. But there's the there's the steps ready for the seats to go in, um, and just there you see the orchestra pit, um, which you will see in a short while will have a row of seats in. Uh, we eventually take those seats out because they're too they're too close to the stage. So that reduced our seating capacity from 250 to 235. This is the uh, stage area going in. Uh, and a look up towards the top of the fly tower. Those are smoke vents, so in case of fire, they will automatically open and draw the fire up through the roof away from the audience. At the back there, you can see the lighting and control rooms. This is a picture from the back of the stage looking out into the auditorium. You can see the, the proscenium arch. This Now we're up into the, th into the second floor at the back of the building, which is the rehearsal room. And the rehearsal room is the same size as the stage, so that uh, a set could be laid out on the floor for the actors to uh, rehearse on whilst there was something going on in the auditorium. This is looking down from the, uh, what, is, what will become the Alex Gallery onto the stage. And this is looking from the front of the auditorium, from the sound control booth uh, into the into the theatre. So as you can see, John Sambrook was, was, was quite clever in the lighting and um, sound control people, had a full view of everything that was going on in the, in the theatre on the stage, which was quite essential. There we go, looking down, a very, very steep rake, um, as you will see later when the seating goes in, um, uh, to use the old saying, there's not a bad seat in the house because everyone can see quite clearly uh, because of, the, because of the, uh, the extent of that rake. That's the front of house lighting gallery which has been, which has been put in, which spans the whole of the auditorium so the lighting technicians can walk along there to set their lights. Here we are, we're now a step closer to completion. Again, looking down Marston Grove to the theatre. Here we are, the seats are in place now. As you can see, uh, not a bad seat in the house, apart from just that front row, which we eventually got rid of. This is a scaffolding that's been used to install the flying equipment. As I said, it was 11 metres high. There you can see the hemp ropes which form part of the flying system. And behind that is the power flying system, which is the one we elected to do uh, install ra rather than the counterweight system, which is, which is the common system that's installed. And the reason we uh, went for the flying, power flying system was because it would take probably um, three, three years to, to train somebody to fly, a theater, fly in the theatre properly and there was only one person, two people who had done any counterweight flying before we decided, we elected to go for the power system because it was easier to teach. Here we are in the uh, foyer, uh, those are beginning to lay the carpets now. Uh, the area there is what will eventually become the bar. And we are now a step nearer to completing them. We've got the signage outside the theatre, uh, Stoke on Trent Repertory Theatre, and the 
the main entrance to the theatre with its canopy there and the furniture in place in the foyer which was all um, stainless steel tables. There's the uh, walkway uh, above the foyer, the bar, and there's the barman just trying to uh, just trying the beer out for the first time. This is quite close to our opening our opening night. Uh, everything ready for sale for the patrons to come in and enjoy themselves. It's the box office. You'll notice all the um, <coughs> electrical installation. There's no surface mounted electrical installation anywhere in the public areas. It's all been, it's all been uh, embedded into the building. So a view across the landing, which is the entrance to the, to the theatre from, from the high level. There's that staircase you saw earlier on being uh, installed uh, into the um, into the auditorium through those doors there. And this is into the auditorium from the lower air, from the lower corridor. The powered flying has now been installed and uh, each line can be controlled by these control panels you see here and set so that when the scenery uh, comes in, it comes to its set point and stops. And again, to go out, press the button and it goes out to the point that you asked it to stop at. The large doors at the back there are through from the stage to the workshop. The completed lighting and, and sound control rooms up there. Uh, that's the uh, LX gallery where all the uh, lighting is controlled from. Main auditorium with the house tabs going up gracefully. And there the completed auditorium with all the seats installed. And there we have the theatre complete. A notice board on the main leak road announcing to the world what we are about to perform. As you can remember from the artist's impression at the beginning of this film, it, fair, it stuck fairly closely to, to John Sandbrook's uh, original design. The opening day finally arrived and Arts Minister, the Honourable Mark Fisher, performed the task in fine fashion. This is um, Mark Fisher who performed the official opening. Uh, he was the Minister